Well, I would like to talk you through an unprovable theorem. This is a really interesting bit of maths that a guy called Ruben Goodstein did in 1944. So it starts with just any number, so I'm going to pick 19. And then to set things up, what we need to do is break it into powers of 2, so 16 plus 2 plus 1. So just making that explicit, 16 is 2 to the power of 4. OK, so we've written in base 2, but I want to go a little bit further. We want to write it in what is technically called hereditary base 2. What that means is really, when I look at this, all I want to be able to see is 2s and 1s. OK, and here you can see I can see a 4. So we're going to get rid of that. I'm going to rewrite that 4 as 2 squared. So we get 2 to the 2 to the 2 plus 2 plus 1. OK, so we've set it up and ready to go. What we do next is there's two steps, and we're going to create a new number. The first step is to replace every 2 we can see with a 3. 3 to the 3 to the 3, plus 3, plus 1, and then we subtract 1. So I did two steps there, replace all the 2s with 3s, and then subtract 1. OK, and so we better write that out. So 3 to the 3 to the 3, plus 3, plus 1, minus 1. So uh, if you work out how big this number is, this is actually quite a big number. This is now bigger than 7 trillion. So it's bigger than 7 times 10 to the 12. Whoa. Why is that so big? Well, 3 to the 3 to the 3? Because 3 to the 3 to the 3. So once you've got these towers of powers, numbers get big uh, quickly. We're only getting started. Let's do another step. Same thing again, replace all the 3s with 4s, and then subtract 1. So 4 to the 4 to the 4, plus 4, and then subtract 1. OK, so we've got to recompute this now. So this 4 to the 4 to the 4. So this is now going to be plus 3, of course. I only want to see 4s and 1s, so I'm going to rewrite the, the 3 as 1 plus 1 plus 1. 1. So we've got it in the right form. I can only see 4s and 1s. Uh, how big is this number? Uh, this is bigger than 10 to the power of 150. Huh. So that's a 1 with 150 zeros after it. Just for context, people generally take the number of atoms in the observable universe to be around 10 to the 80. So um, this is a pretty big number. Uh, you can see how we can keep going. Replace the 4s with 5s. Subtract 1. Replace the 5s with 6s. Subtract 1. We keep going, keep going. So the, the question is, uh, what's going to happen if we keep repeating these two steps? So the steps are with the, what we call the base change. So replace the 2s with 3s, replace the 3s with 4s, replace the 4s with 5s, and so on. And then at each step, we subtract 1. And maybe you have to recalculate at that point. So what's going to happen? So uh, maybe we can get an idea by starting somewhere a bit smaller. So we started with 19. So I'm going to start with something smaller. Let's try it again, the same, exactly the same thing again, but start with 3, OK? So we start with 3, write that in base 2, well, that's uh, pretty easy, it's 2 plus 1. OK, now let's do our two steps. Uh, so we replace the 2s with 3s, and we get the plus 1 here, but then I'm going to subtract 1, so plus 1, minus 1, cancel out, so we've got 3 again. So now we'll do the same thing again, replace the 3s with 4s, and subtract 1. I've got to recalculate now, so this is going to be, well, it's 3, of course, but I only want to see 4s at this stage, so we can write this as 1 plus 1 plus 1. And now I don't have any 4s left, right? So when I do the next stage, which is to replace the 4s with 5s, actually nothing happens, right? There are no 4s to replace the 5s, so only the subtracting 1 happens at this point. So you can see the next step is going to just be 1 plus 1, and then after that it's going to be just 1 and then 0. So you can see, if we start with 3... It died. It died. It goes 3... 3, 3, 2, 1, 0. And what Ruben Goodstein showed is that, um, in fact, it always dies, eventually. So, so, that, so that 19 one we did would have yeah. died eventually? Yes, it would have died eventually. The question is, how long is eventually? Those uh, sequences we've just started building are called Goodstein sequences after this guy. Goodstein, OK? I'm going to build a new sequence called the Goodstein meta sequence. And the meta sequence is the length of successive Goodstein sequences, right, until it hits zero. OK, let's just do one more Goodstein sequence. So if we start with two, it's already in base two. Replace all the twos with threes and then subtract one. Well, we're on two again, of course, one plus one. Replace all the threes with fours. Well, there aren't any, so we just get to one and we get to zero. So you can see if we start on two, uh, the length is four. Right? We already have seen if we start on 3, the length was 6. If we start on 4, how big is it going to be? Any guesses? 2 to the 2. I don't know, I guess about like 
10 or 12? Yeah, um, that's a, it's a natural guess. Uh, it's not quite right. If we start on 4, the length of the Goodstein sequence is uh, bigger than 10 to the power of, well, 10 to the 8. So that's 10 to the power of 100 million. That's the length of the sequence? That's the length of the sequence before it hits 0. It takes more than 10 to the power of 100 million steps. I, I was quite wrong. You weren't that close. Weren't that close. <laughs> that's, that's insane. It is surprising, isn't it, right? It, it's, it's really surprising. It's, this is, so this thing, this Goodstein meta sequence, is a really, really fast growing sequence. Yeah. Extremely fast. Do you want, should we do the next one? Yeah, okay, yeah. So, so we start on five. Yeah. So this time, the, the length of the sequence is going to be bigger than 10 to the 10 to the 10 to the 10 to the 4. But eventually it will die away. Eventually it will die away. Of course, neither you or I will be alive to see it. But if we kept doing it, kept doing it, kept doing it, it would eventually hit zero. Yeah, yeah. Nuts. And so at this point, we start to run into notational difficulties. So if I wanted to talk about how long is the sequence if we start on six, basically you can no longer write this in sort of normal uh, mathematical notation. If I tried to build a tower of powers tall enough, I wouldn't be able to. You get to the point where the height of the tower is itself ridiculously big. I mean, there is notation people use. People use these things called Knuth arrows, after the computer scientist Donald Knuth. And it turns out that this one, if you start on six, the length of the sequence is bigger than two, four Knuth arrows, nine. Now, don't know what that means. I mean, we can go through it, or you can just take my word for it that it is. We have got uh, some videos that involve Knuth arrotation, so people can have a look. If we start on 12, then the length of the sequence is bigger than Graham's number, which is a famously enormous number, uh, which you also have a video about. So that's after 12 steps. So after 12 steps, the... the um, that, sorry, that's, that's using the number 12 as our yeah, start point. Yeah, so if we use the number 12 as our starting point, uh, the length of the uh, Goodstone sequence is um, bigger than Graham's number. So taking this as our meta sequence, it's bigger than Graham's number after 12 steps. So this is a really, really fast growing sequence, which is a wild ride, right? It's, uh, it, it's fun that something you can express quite simply um, has these sort of ridiculously big, um, big answers. So we started with 19, right? And you asked how long is eventually. And the answer is, I mean, I don't have <laughs> the vocabulary to express that without you know, uh, making quite a long video to get into it, because you have to go a long way past Graham's number. Um, so it's, it's really, really big. Um, I think that's probably the best I can say about how big it is. But it will die away. It will, it, even the 19, eventually you'll get to that point where we've just got ones killing each other. Exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, you, you do eventually. And I think there's a really nice sort of... Um, tortoise and the hare aspect to this because when you're building these good stone sequences there's two steps right there's the uh, there's the base change operation and there's the minus one and the base change just sends things flying up insanely fast right if you change two to the two to the two to three to the three to three that is a massive increase and then again four to four to the four right on the other hand what's minus one doing right it looks like it's having negligible impact but actually eventually Though all those accumulated minus ones, in fact, overhaul um, this base change operation. So the base change isn't blowing up so quickly that the ones can't catch it. So just to try and give an example of how the ones, the mi all those minus ones, eventually overhaul this ridiculously fast-growing base change operation. So let's just go to take four as our starting point. Okay, start with four. Write that in hereditary base two. That's two to the two. So then to do the next step, we replace all the uh, twos with threes, three to the three and then we subtract 1. So we've got to recalculate. This is the point. So if we recalculate this, is 3 to 3 is 27. So 3 to 3 minus 1 is 26. And then we have to uh, write that in a new way. So you can write that as 9 plus 9 plus 3 plus 3 plus 1 plus 1. I should really change those to uh, 3 to the 1 plus 1, I guess, if I was going to be really strict about it. But you get the idea. The point I want to make here is you can see how we've got this sort of block here is now getting broken down when we do this recalculation. So the, the minus 1 has had a sort of, is taken a bite out of the, the main block here. And that's how eventually the, um, all the minus ones overhaul this, uh, so they have to repeatedly do this, uh, and it takes ridiculously long, but eventually the minus ones win, yeah. So eventually those minus ones are able to stop the block 
building such big numbers in the first place? Well, yeah, because the block starts to get sort of taken apart into smaller blocks. And then each of those smaller blocks gets taken apart into smaller blocks and smaller blocks and so on. And that's how, that's, that's the effect that the minus ones have. But it takes them longer and longer each time as the numbers get bigger. So, yeah, I mean, to, to actually see this happen in, in, in a bigger example than this is a little bit difficult. But You showed how long it takes 19 to get taken apart. But well, I, I failed. I, I tried. <laughs> I tried. But every number eventually does reach its demise. Yeah, so uh, Ruben Goodstein showed that whichever number you start on, it will eventually hit zero. But at the beginning, I promised you an unprovable theorem, okay? So that theorem of Ruben Goodstein's is what some people call an unprovable theorem in the following sense. Back at the end of the 19th century, various people were trying to write down the sort of fundamental laws that govern arithmetic. Arithmetic here is just the whole numbers with um, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. So just sort of the most basic mathematical structure we have. So the question is, what are the sort of fundamental laws that, that you need to write down to make that tick? And the guy who had the most success was called Giuseppe Piano, and he wrote down this list of rules which are called Piano's axioms, and they've been tinkered with a little bit in the intervening time, but by and large, Piano's axioms remain today the industry standard. Those are what um, mathematicians use as the, the standard axiomatization of arithmetic. Okay, hop forward a little bit until 1931, where Kurt Gödel proved his famous incompleteness theorem. And what his incompleteness theorem says is no attempt to fully axiomatize arithmetic is ever gonna work completely. It's never, you're never gonna have a totally satisfactory axiomatization in the sense that um, whatever laws you write down, there's always gonna be some true fact about numbers which um, your laws cannot prove, okay? And that's true for any set of laws you might try to write down, um, but in particular it's true for the industry standard, which is Piano's laws. So there are these things there called unprovable theorems in the sense of being true facts about numbers which don't derive from the usual laws of arithmetic. So Gödel and others at the time did come up with some statements about arithmetic which uh, didn't follow from uh, the usual laws of arithmetic, um, but they're very um, unnatural in a sense. They're, they're clever logical paradoxes, brilliant, but not the kind of thing you're going to run into if you're just sort of doing ordinary numerical work. You know, you're not just never going to encounter that sort of thing. So um, some people have been looking for examples of what we call c concrete incompleteness in the sense of um, un an unprovable theorem, which is something you can understand without you know, having to know anything about um, logic or Gödel. It turned out so much later, so in about 1982, uh, Laurie Kirby and Jeff Paris showed that Goodstein's theorem is an example of an unprovable theorem. It is true, Goodstein established it, but it, it is not provable from Piano's laws. It's not provable from the usual uh, axiomatization of arithmetic. What did Goodstein use to prove it then? Like, why do we believe it? Okay, so that's a good question. Um, Goodstein used some um, fancy infinite machinery, uh, essentially. Fine, but the question is, if you're just working with finite numbers, and just working with addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, you wouldn't expect that you'd have to use some really fancy infinite machinery to prove facts about them. So he had to kind of reach out of the sand pit to find a few tools that he shouldn't really have had access to in the more simple world. Yeah, so it's uh, exa exactly in that you would expect what we call a totally finite tree statement. So finite tree meaning it's just about finite numbers and finite operations should have a completely finite tree proof, right? But in order to prove it, he, he couldn't come up with a finite tree proof. He had to reach into this sort of toolbox of much fancier infinite tree uh, laws. And um, so he did that, um, but the question was, you know, was that just something he decided? It was a shortcut or was it an, a necessary step? And um, in the 1980s, we established actually you have to do it. There's no way of coming up with a purely finite tree proof of Goodstein's theorem. So I've told you two things about Goodstein's theorem, right? I've told you um, that it's this unprovable theorem. And we've also seen that it's got this ridiculously fast growing sequence, okay? Those two things are related. So it's not a coincidence that both of those things are true. Um, in the sense that if we um, work with some, just work with Piano's laws, there is a limit to how fast growing a sequence they can cope with. There's a sort of speed limit 
on how fast a sequence they can handle. And good sign sequence is just faster than that. It just grows too big too quickly for the usual laws of arithmetic to be able to handle. Up your game and upgrade your brain by delving into the amazing courses and content on Brilliant. Everything here is designed with care, fun, a little touch of genius. I love how interactive everything is. It's so satisfying, dragging and dropping and pressing and sliding. I love it, I love this. It just, it just makes learning fun. And the range of topics covered across mathematics, science, the world of computers, it's vast. And Brilliant's always adding new stuff all the time. You can do all this on your computer or on a handheld device. And if you've already got Brilliant yourself, why not gift a subscription to someone in your life who loves to learn, young or old? Do you know someone who's ready to expand their horizons? Or are you that person? Get started for free for a full 30 days by going to brilliant.org slash number file. There's also a link in the description and a QR code here on the screen. And by the way, there's an amazing 20% off an annual premium subscription by using that very same link. Our thanks to Brilliant for supporting Numberphile. Go and have a play around, it's great.